Hello everyone. So today I am coming up with a different video about a piece of tech that I have not upgraded in the last three years. Yeah, that's the MacBook Pro 2015. So I have not upgraded in this in the last three years, uh, and I wanted to give my reason and opinions on that. Uh, sure, uh, your reasons and opinions would be different. So I would definitely uh, like to hear that in the comments. And uh, don't get me wrong, I am not an Apple hater nor an Apple fanboy. I just like some of the products that Apple does and MacBook Pro was one which I had recommended to a lot of my friends. But then I think after 2015, uh, there are some things that Apple has done wrong with the MacBook Pros and I think that's what this video is about. So let's just start. So the first thing that I want to talk about the biggest uh, issues with the MacBook Pro that everybody has, I mean even my friends and everybody has said is about the keyboards. I do like the keyboard on this 2015 MacBook Pro may not be the best uh, i would not say it's some of the comfortable ones or the good as some of the windows laptops that i have used but definitely it is much better uh, it was you don't feel fatigue while typing it the keystrokes are good the travel is okay -ish. Uh, but 2016 onwards, as you know, Apple adopted the butterfly uh, design for the keyboards and I think it's one of the worst decisions that Apple took with their keyboards. I mean, I have heard people having problems a lot with these keyboards uh, than actually liking them. Uh, yeah, they do have more sound than the 2015 one. Uh, they improved upon it in 2018. The keyboard stroke sound is much lesser in 2018. But then I think the design itself, there's a lot of people having problem with dust, with liquid spillage. I haven't been having this laptop for three years. I had liquid spillage and dust and never have had, had any issues with this. Uh, the keyboard works fine till now and never had issues. Uh, some of my friends even had to return their laptops uh, to uh, Apple to get it repaired. Uh, they had keyboards replaced, key uh, caps replaced, uh, individual keys replaced. I think a lot of people have made videos about the keyboard issues and other issues with the MacBook uh, like from Bad and Howard, Unbox Therapy, everybody have uh, made videos about it. So um, the one question that came to my mind was, are the Apple MacBooks as reliable as they were uh, in 2015? And somehow for me, it looks they are not as reliable. It's, it's sometimes a luck factor now because there are some people who are having zero issues with their MacBook Pro like MKBHD said he never had any issue with his MacBook but there are a lot of instances where other people are having uh, problems with their MacBook. So I think it's just a luck factor that has happened now so that's first factor. The second thing is uh, the touch bar. I think from an innovation point of view the touch bar is really very good but I doubt that anybody is using it. Uh, I don't see that people use it regularly and I think it's one of the pieces that Apple put in uh, from an innovation standpoint of view but I think as an end customer probably I use it maybe 10 to 15 percent of the time and even my friends uh, who have used uh, their touch bar MacBook Pros hardly say they use it so it's maybe 10 to 15 percent but then because of those innovations and uh, other uh, changes that Apple did it increase the prices so the macbook became really pricey uh, if you take the latest iteration of 2018 macbook it's uh, for a 13 inch touch bar macbook it's about 1800 uh, dollars or 1800 pounds uh, when i was getting this in 2015 it was about 1100 to 1200 pounds which was mostly acceptable for a device like this because even after three years uh, it's still working very well with me but 1800 dollars or pounds is a really high value and on top of it having the reliability and the hardware issues I think that's one thing which uh, Apple could have uh, maybe avoided uh, that kind of innovation probably was not the right time uh, to put it in and uh, I think they should have some more thought on that. And the next point that I wanted to talk about is also the screen. So uh, the screen in this uh, 2015 MacBook is quite good. The retina display with the brightness, everything is quite good. With the current laptops, I agree that they have uh, increased the brightness. So you have uh, almost up to uh, 500 nits uh, in the current uh, MacBook Pros. That's really very good to have bright displays. But then Apple did this true tone display on 2018, which I think is uh, for from the creators or from uh, the people who use it for video editing and all. It's really not very useful because with true tone display, you don't uh, exactly get the right color combination that you want when you're editing the videos. And most of the creators and uh, uh, the professional people that I know have turned off the true tone display. So it's probably more uh, gimmicky on the laptop if you are a creator or a YouTubers or uh, if you are a professional guy. For normal usage, I agree, Do when you're uh, writing or reading or seeing videos, I think it does has help in uh, that way. But I think for professionals, you turn it off anyway. 
Okay, the next point is from the build uh, quality point of view, Apple MacBooks have been built really, very well. Uh, in three years time, I have not found any issues with the build quality. It is very nice. Even till today, it is very sturdy. Even the hinge works very well without any problem. Uh, so really very well, uh, very well. And the uh, latest ones also are built very well. But then there are a lot of reliability issues with the latest ones. That's, I think, my second main reason. So it's a keyboard and the innovations which probably doesn't matter much to me uh, the price increase and the last thing i would say is the reliability issues hell lot of people i know have uh, had uh, reliability issues with the mac uh, macbooks from 2016 onwards i think the 2016 was okay the 2017 2018 lot of issues people having issues with the screens people have issues with touch bar not working people having issues with keyboard and in general the build quality of the laptop itself there are so many people having laptops with issues which have not been solved even till today you can uh, find people like mars bar brandon howard and uh, other people also complaining that they had issues even uh, my other friend parth uh, in the other day when he was uh, explaining in his everyday carry uh, video he also said that his macbook keycaps are coming out there have been a lot of issues with the reliability factor at the same time i would say not everybody is having the problem because some of my other friends never had any issues with their macbook which they bought it in 2017 so it's like now become like it's a luck factor that has become that you might get a good device uh, which will definitely last long or you might get a device which has issues and ultimately i think you just have to uh, sell it off that's what some of my friends have done and have their uh, cut their losses because it just becomes not usable sometimes so you have the screen getting switched off you have the touch bar not working essentially you cannot power on the laptop so i think from that point of view reliability has been a big problem with uh, apple macbooks recently and that's something which apple definitely has to address and from a creator standpoint of view i being a youtube creator and doing some video editing and photos and all editing and all this 2015 macbook is serving me really very well uh, of late i used to edit uh, 1080p videos so it used to handle 1080p videos very well but here you can see a 4k footage uh, even it handles the 4k footage very well even for editing and all so it's really not bad for me to have uh, it upgraded to a latest one because it's able to handle all the things very well. The only thing is I want Apple to make a much more reliable, better product. When I'm ready to spend about $1,800 or pounds, I expect Apple to give me such a premium uh, value laptop, not with having so many issues. When I'm paying about $1,700 or pounds uh, for a laptop, I expect uh, it to be really very premium and not having this kind of issues with keyboard screens and reliability. You obviously expect a better reliable laptop at that price. So I think at this point of time, uh, what I would say is, as I said before, my main four reasons for not upgrading is the keyboard issues, the reliability, uh, some of the innovation which drove up the prices, but really, uh, the consumer did not get much out of those innovations and yeah the price at the end so these four factors were the ones which made me not to upgrade uh, and i'm still holding on to my 2015 macbook and it still does a lot of things good it uh, does photo editing video everything 4k video it can edit so those are the reasons that i didn't do the upgrade i am hopefully waiting for apple to do something good in 2019 where they probably solve all these issues because I am not sure after one or two years it will still age and I would have to go for the next one and I really do uh, like MacBook Pros but then if this way it continues I think I have to see uh, from the Premiere uh, Pro side of you Windows Premiere Pro side of you so I'll just check it out so yeah that was my views and opinions on why I didn't upgrade my 2015 MacBook Pro uh, I would definitely like to hear your uh, views and opinion and I would definitely like to hear if people who have used the 2017-2018 MacBook Pro you had any of those issues or it works fine for you i think it's really good if it works fine for you uh, but otherwise do let me know uh, in the comments below and uh, definitely i'll read and uh, reply to all of them um, that's it i wanted to say about in this video so if you like the video please do uh, hit the thumbs up and please do subscribe if you dislike the video please let me know in the comments below and definitely i'll improve upon in the next video thanks for watching